At this time, we, we are going to pass the uh, presentation and the mic over to uh, Jason. So Jason is from Nixonia. It's a company located here in Toronto. And uh, Jason joined um, Nixonia in early 2014, and he manages the training and product review at Nixonia. Nixonia is a product uh, that basically helps customers with their expense reporting and timesheet applications. And in fact, this is a product that uh, over the next month, uh, Bass will be introducing to our group. So at this time, I'm going to pass it on to, uh, to, to Jason. OK, terrific. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, if you can mute the, if you can mute, um, All right, let's give that a shot. All right, give that a shot. Nope, 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 nope. that. <laughs> All right, let's test that out. Perfect, I think we're in business. All right, let's test that out. Perfect, I think we're in business. All right. It should be okay. Actually, you know what? Let me, um, I'll head over there, actually, if that's, oh, that's perfect, actually. I think we're in business. Okay. All right. Thanks for being with us, folks. My name is Jason here at Nixonia. And what my role here is to walk you through um, the Nixonia expense solution uh, with intact integration. What I'm just going to do is uh, open up my slides. I've only got a couple of slides to review. Uh, then we'll just jump right into the product demonstration side of things. All right, terrific. So, next on you. So, we're an end-to-end -end expense solution. It's highly configurable. It's not about you learning how uh, Nixonia works and adapting to us. It's about us learning how you need the expenses created and reflecting that in your configuration. We're basically creating a uh, employee-friendly environment where they can create the expenses, be guided through their creation of the expenses with all the rules, conditions, able to capture the receipts on their mobile phone or email them in, and basically build the expense out, run it through the approval process, and then once it's fully approved, it moves over to intact. Now, I won't spend too much time on my slides. I'd rather dive right into the product side of things. But uh, just a bit of information about Nixonia as a company. So we've been around for over seven years with a very stable platform in business. In fact, our unscheduled downtime has been only about 15 hours in 11 years. Like Intact, we're, so well, we're software as service. Uh, so you're accessible, you can access Nexonia via any major web browser as well as our mobile applications on iOS devices, Androids, Windows, or Blackberry devices. In fact, we've, we're in the uh, Apple App Store uh, from day one with the expense application, and we've been constantly enhancing it ever since. Our customer turnover, we're proud to say, is effectively zero. We've ever, ever lost a customer, well, Ingrid's already used the, the, the uh, death and marriage analogy, but essentially that's the only way we've ever lost a customer, if they went out of business or if they were acquired. And in fact, I actually like showing off the intact integration because their web services makes it really simple for us to integrate with all the data that you have on intact. Any of those standard dimensions, of course, like customer, vendors, employees, projects, as well as the deeper information, the project resources, tasks. You make a change to an employee record on Intact, it's reflected on the Exonia side of things. You only have one place to update this information. We use that information to create the expenses, as I'll demonstrate, and then once it's created, the expense reports are then exported into Intact once they're fully approved. And I'll be able to demonstrate that in our uh, session today. I always like to share this slide. It's just a few familiar faces that currently use Nixonia. Our customers range from small user groups or five or ten users to large multinational corporations with thousands of users all around the world. We support them all with our product, implementation, training, and support. 
But without further ado, I'd like to actually move over to the product demonstration side of things. Let me just pause my screen and I'll open up Nexonia's mobile application and on the web. All right, so let me just wake up my phone here. There we go. And share my screen. So what you're seeing on the screen here is Nexonia's mobile and web applications for expense creation. I actually just threw this account together last night and it's integrated live with my Intact account. I'm logged in as Brian. He's an employee here for Bass. So Brian's able to go into his mobile application on his, I, on his uh, iOS device and create his expenses. Now in Exonia, we're a subscriber base. We don't charge by the expense report. So you can create as many expense reports as you need, depending on your preference for organizing the expenses or simply how you need the employees to submit their expenses. You can create as many as you need. And the expense reports, I like to describe them like containers. In those containers are all the individual expense items. So you can actually have an expense report be a mix of different expenses, different customers, different projects, mixing billable and non-billable, reimbursable and credit card expenses. They can all be mixed together in the same expense report. Because when it comes to the approvals and reporting and the export, we can filter and group this information and direct it where it needs to go. So right off the bat here, let's create an expense. So in our office, I think we end up having to go downstairs to pick up the milk for the office. All right, so I pay for the milk at the local grocery store, got my receipt in hand. Great, well, I photograph my receipt. There we go. Attach it to my expense, and then build my expense out. So that was from the 29th of April. All right, I can tag it to a specific customer or project, which I'll explain in just a moment. Uh, that was the supplies, so let's categorize that. And milk for office, drop that in the memo field. Done, save. Before I even get a chance to get back to the elevator, that's the expense fully created. Uh, maybe you want to throw an amount in there too. There we go. All right, so there's our expense created, fully formed, ready to move into approvals. But let's do a second item here and explain what we're seeing. With Nixonia, employees are able to capture the receipts digitally. They can photograph them, they can use them immediately, they can store them inside the expense report for later, or even retrieve them from the camera roll on their phone, like so. And of course, you can attach as many receipts as you need to any given expense. If you need to attach all five pages of that hotel bill, not a problem. You're able to also email receipts in, fax them in. You can also upload them directly from your computer as images or as PDF documents. Now, in the creation of this expense, the layout you're seeing here is configured and integrated with my Intact account. So, for example, there's a list of customers I've got coming in from Intact and a list of the relevant projects. So, if this is a client-based expense, I could say that was for Globex, for example, and link that to a specific project. Now, with that information, we're also able to filter that. So, we're showing the employee only what you want them to see. For example, you could have 100 projects in Intact. Well, great. If you're using project resources where you're assigning users to specific projects, we'll only show them the projects they're assigned to. That filter can happen through the Intact integration and drive that, or it can happen here solely on Exonia. If you want your West Coast region to see a specific list of customers and your East Coast region to see a specific list, great. Never the twain shall meet. They'll be separated out. As I said, the idea is to show the employee only what they need to see and not overwhelm them with information and kind of remove that margin of error. Similarly, that works for the categories. So these are our categories and these are driven by the expense types in Intact. And we can handle any type of expense type, whether it's regular, cash advances, cash returns, or per diem amounts. So for example, this list is also filterable. These expense categories, you can choose whether um, if sales isn't allowed to use uh, cash advance, cash return, great. They don't even see it as an option. Um, if you have different entities, well, they'll be presented with their own specific list of categories or requirements on those expenses. So let's choose entertainment. Entertainment's one I like to, to use because it's a great example of how on Exania, with each category, you can set up your rules and policies. Basically, the spending conditions they have to meet 
And if they don't meet those conditions, it's going to flag the expense to the approver that something's missing or outright block it. For example, uh, entertainment produced a new field here called attendees. I need to list who was on this expense with me. I can add myself. I can add a guest by typing in their details and building a list out. I can even just add a name from the address book on my phone. Tapping a name in, there they are added. And with that expense category, you can set up the spending rules or spending limits, how old expenses can be when you submit them, and of course receipt reinforcement. As I said, they essentially have to get the expense right before they're even permitted to submit it for approval. And fields like attendees or memo or any other field can be made to be mandatory. If you absolutely require that information, then as you see with department, it's in red. They have to fill the information in, otherwise this item does not move forward into the approval process whatsoever. Now, for this demonstration, I've exposed a couple other fields. Uh, we can always remove them if they're not required. Paid by the employee and reimbursable. So these are defaulted to reimbursable expenses. As you see later on with your credit card, they'll be paid by the company and non-reimbursable. Then you have your billable status. If you're using billable, uh, if you need to report expenses as being billable or non-billable, again, it's all about how much control you want to give the user. We can make that a default value as it is here, yes or no, automatically based off a customer, a project, a specific type of expense. Or it could be an option where it's no, but it's uh, with a default override switch where they can switch it to yes if it's a rare case of being billable. And lastly, I've also set up the department and location field. Again, this information is coming from Intact. And here I've set it up with the default values. That's actually driven by Brian's employee record on Intact with a default department selected for him based off his assignment. Others are available if you have the cross charge for any other reason. And same for location. Default values save them the time. If that's the one they use 90% of the time, then it saves them that extra step of selecting it each and every time. And lastly, the memo information. You can fill in your memo information, the who, the what, the where of the expense. You can add it in. Plenty of space for it, and it's transferred over to intact as well. And save. Now, with any of these expenses, by the way, as I said, it's configurable in terms of what information you need from the employees. For example, for uh, entertainment, maybe you have an extra field that appears called business purpose. We can accommodate custom fields that can be generated solely in Nixonia. They don't have to interact with anything on Intact if you don't want it to as a way to collect information. So for entertainment, for example, that business purpose field would show up and they'd be required to fill that in, for example. Now, uh, one other expense I always like to show off here is mileage. It's pretty common. I've had to do it for years, and we do support the old-fashioned way of requiring odometer numbers, but we have a bit more of an elegant solution by integrating with Google Maps. All we need from the employees are the addresses where they stopped. You could type in an address, or, as I did with attendees, I can just add it in from the address book on my phone. So let's say I started in Montreal visiting Alexandra, then I visited Sam in Buffalo. In fact, you can add up to six addresses to any mileage expense. Let's say I'm at a destination right now, so I'll just tap my location and it'll plug the GPS coordinates from the phone into the mileage entry. I can tap generate map. What will happen is it will calculate the distance between those points, create a copy of the Google map as my receipt, and apply it against my reimbursement rate. There the, uh, you see the current Canada revenue rate, but we can almost accommodate a specific rate that you need. Here I made the memo required because I want to know what the reason for the trip was. Otherwise, done and save. There's the expense created. Now, Nixani also has time savers that help the employees with the creation of the expenses. Right now, I've been creating expenses and then attaching receipts. You're also able to save a receipt in your expense report and use it later. So let's say, for example, I'm having this meal. It's on work. Got the receipt right in front of me, so I'll capture it. So I don't want to create the expense right away, but what I can do is quickly jot down some notes on it, such as the date, and let's put the amounts in here too. And we'll say uh, dinner with bass. There we go. Done. Save. So that information is saved on your receipt record. All right, well, the next day, the next week, whenever the employee gets around to creating the expense, they can take that receipt, build the expense from it, and it'll fill the information in automatically. There's the date. There's the amount. Once I categorize it, there's the memo. Save. 
So if your employees complain that they don't have enough time to do their expense immediately, they can quickly snap a photo and use that data in the creation of the expense later on. So that's just kind of a high-level tour of the reimbursable expenses. Now, of course, we also provide uh, expense solutions for credit card management. With business or corporate credit cards, we actually enter, uh, we also we have the transaction feed from the card come in directly to Nixonia. In fact, it delivers the transactions on a daily basis from your corporate or business card, typically the next day after being posted by the vendor. So my transactions arrive here. Well, I then go to my expense report, select a credit card transaction, and build an expense out of it. Of course, it fills in the date and the amount that spent money from the credit card. You can't change it. I can attach a receipt. This one will grab off the uh, camera roll here. A lot to choose from. Let's grab that one. I can link this to a specific customer, a specific project. It's categorized as a car rental. Towards the bottom, you see it's paid by the company. This, it knows that this card is non-reimbursable to the employee. As well, in the memo field, we've deposited the extra transaction information from the card. Plenty of space for more details. And we can always map this data into specific fields. If you need to track who your pay-to credit card vendors are, then we auto-populate it with that Avis rent car information. So you can track that. And save. There's our credit card charge at the bottom. Whenever you expense something from the credit card, it's going to get removed from this transaction list. So one, the employee can see how many transactions they have left to expense from the card. Two, there's controls in place, for example, that they can't expense the same credit card item twice. There are other controls in place that help with the timeliness and turnaround of these expenses. For example, we can send notifications to the employees when new transactions arrive. If those transactions have sat there for more than five days, we'll start sending automatic email reminders to them, reminding them they have an outstanding credit card charge to do. And we can also copy that to an administrator or a manager as well. We like to refer to this as our autonag function. As well, at any point, the administrator, finance, whoever you'd like to grant that permission to, they can run a reconciliation report, extracting a list of all the transactions from the credit cards in Nexonia with the statement date, posting date, and you can identify which transactions are still outstanding, who you need to chase down before the bill payment date comes up. Now, just as a note here, the, the application synchronizes automatically every five minutes. That means it's transferring the data from the phone back to our web server and from the web server up to the phone. Now, I also like to highlight at this point, this is a native application with full offline capabilities. That means you don't need a live internet connection to the phone in order to use the application. You could be on that airplane flight, no internet, use that downtime, create the expenses. When you get back to the office, the hotel, the airport Wi-Fi, then you synchronize. The only reason you ever need an internet connection is to synchronize data from the phone to the web and vice versa or to submit the expenses in for approval. So for example, here on the web, if I go to expenses, there's my expense reports I've built on the phone so far. And in fact, the expenses are still in draft mode. That means I can still edit them, change them, add more details if I need to, or add more expenses into this report. As you can see, still the same input fields. And other ways to add receipts include, as I mentioned, faxing, emailing. Oh, there we go. Faxing, emailing, or uh, uploading directly into the application. Now, as well, Nixani also handles value-added tax systems really well and foreign currency. For example, if this was an expense meal on a trip and this is expense in foreign currency, well, other currencies are available to this employee. In fact, there's over 180 around the world available that the administrator can have the click of the button. So let's say this was in pounds. It's going to do the conversion directly in the application itself, converting it back to your base currency. And in fact, that information, the exchange rate, it's coming in from an online source. Uh, we can set it for either xe.com or oanda.com. And it's date-based. So if I said that was from the 20th, it's going to use the specific exchange rate from the 20th. That way you get an accurate reimbursement for those expenses. Now, of course, if this person, Brian, expenses on a personal credit card, credit card companies charge a slightly higher rate occasionally, or always, we do allow a 5% margin of adjustment on that exchange rate so he can, he can reflect exactly the rate he was provided from the bank, from the exchange house. We set 5% up as a default. We find that's a good standard, uh, enough wiggle room to account for those fees, but we can always raise or remove it altogether if you prefer.
Now, of course, your credit card charges, they're already coming in fully converted by the credit card, so they just come in whatever your base currency is. All right. So let me just close that. And let's jump back to the uh, mobile application. There we are. So as I mentioned, uh, I demonstrated earlier you have that receipt data available to you. It serves another purpose. It's called receipt matching. Here's how it works, and it works especially with the credit cards. So let's say I spent something on my credit card today. Well, the charge is coming in tomorrow, but I've got my camera right in front of me and my receipt. So let's capture our receipt. There we go. And quickly jot down the date and the amount. Let's say this is from April the 15th and for $10. Save. All right, so the next day the credit card charge arrives. I select that charge. The application actually reconciles through all the receipts with data on it and says, hey, I found one potential match. Great, you review the receipt. If that's the correct one, you tap link to confirm. Fill in any other data that you need. And save. So that's receipt matching. It matches up the receipts with any available transactions. Now, that works especially well, not only for uh, people on the road or using credit cards a lot, but it works really well with designating or what we call proxying, the ability for somebody to create expenses on behalf of somebody else. Common case, of course, being executive assistants doing expenses for executives. We support full proxying where you assign that ability to specific employees where they can go into the application and do their own login and access the other accounts for other users. As you see on the screen here, logged in as myself, I'm the administrator on this account, so I've got this ability by default where I can go into Brian's expenses and create them on his behalf if necessary. But we can also assign that to specific employees. So your executive could have an expense report where all they do is drop the receipts in, maybe put some of those uh, receipt data notes in. The EA logs in, goes to their account, and creates the expenses on their behalf, even doing submissions uh, of these expenses as well. And of course, every expense has an entire history with it, including every step of the process, when it was approved, when it was rejected, and who signed off on the expense at any given point. It's all logged in the system. So we've created some expenses here. And let's move on to submitting this for approval. Now, here on the web, of course, you click on Submit, it'll route the entire expense report into approvals, all five items here. Now, by default, we also do allow selective submissions. So out of this report, say it's a business trip, you want your large dollar items to go in right away, well, you can choose those specifically and submit those in, keeping the rest in draft mode so you can still work on them. Now, here on the mobile phone, let's wake that up again. All right, so it's the end of the week. We're ready to submit our expenses in. Well, we tap on Submit, and it moves into the approval process. And again, if I was offline right now, I would just hold it in queue until I was online again. So these expenses have been submitted. One of the other benefits of the system is you have full visibility to the expenses, so the employee always knows where they stand with the expenses. For example, here, Brian can clearly see these expenses have gone to John Pierce for approval. Here on the web, that same information is available. You can see where these expenses went to. Now as the approver, John receives a notification email immediately alerting him there's expenses to review. And he can review these expenses as well on the mobile application. The approver can review these expenses, can click on any of these receipts of course, and view all the details up close, making sure everything's correct for example. You can view all your expense details here in the expense report or go into them directly if necessary. And depending on your approval process, you can allow the approvers to also make edits or corrections if necessary, which will also get emailed to the employee so they know something was adjusted. Or maybe use a step for the, somebody in finance to add in a specific piece of information that the user may not know, or you just don't even want them to be bothered with that piece of information. Now, with these expenses, the approver can select all these items and approve or reject everything. Or, if necessary, they can be selective. They can choose a specific expense and reject that back to the employee for correction. For example, please provide 
name of client for this expense. Now, when something's rejected back to the employee, they'll get immediate notification on the mobile application and via email that something was rejected. At this point, they can go into the rejected expense, edit it, make the correction, and resubmit it. It's not closed to them. At this point, it's re-released back to them so they can fix it. In the meantime, though, as the approver, you don't have to wait for that correction. If you're on a deadline and you want to get this other 757 on the books, well, great. I can select all my items remaining in the expense report and approve them. So you don't have to necessarily get bottleneck waiting for that $5 correction if you're trying to get that $700 onto your, into intact or uh, reimbursed. Now, in this case, these expenses are now approved. Again, the employee receives notification of approved expenses. Anything with a green check mark is now considered fully approved. It's available to be exported into intact. That information is also available here on the employee side. So they can clearly see, great, everything was approved except for that one item. Let me fix that and I'll resubmit it. Now that approval process you saw was very simplified. It just went to one manager. We can accommodate any approval process you have in mind. In fact, we're kind of proud to say we haven't been stumped yet. It's an element of this configurability. If you want your project expenses to go to a project manager and internal expenses to go to a, a department manager, great. We can send those in different directions. If you need certain amounts, certain expenses over certain spending amounts to go to additional levels, great, no problem. We can do anything and everything in terms of directing the expenses where you need them to go. You can set it through, I've got customers with 30-step approval processes. It's not hitting 30 people, thank God. It's basically asking 30 questions, trying to direct where it needs to go through the system and who needs to sign off based off these conditions and these rules. You can have finance be the final step, regardless of which path it goes through. And once they approve it, then it's fully approved and ready to be exported into intact. Now, that export can happen every day on a schedule. Here I've got my account set up where I'm on a schedule. Every 24 hours, it's synchronizing against my intact account. What it's doing at that point at the start of the day is it's looking for any changes I made on intact. If I updated somebody's reporting manager, added a new customer or project, that information will get reflected on Nixonia and updated. You can always trigger that change uh, on demand if you need it done immediately. At the same time on, that time, on that timer, we're exporting the expense reports into intact. But you can always do it on demand immediately, as I'm about to do now. All right, so we've got some expenses ready to go. So these items, these are the reimbursable items. They're transferred directly into the time and expense module as expense reports for this employee. The credit cards can go in any number of directions. We can transfer them in as expense reports for a dummy employee called corporate visa, for example, where you pay them out that way, or as an AP bill, a journal entry. In my case, I've got this mapped directly into the cash management module. And we can also send over a, a copy of the receipt for the charges and a PDF of the expense report into intact as well. Again, this is all happening on a timer automatically, but you have manual controls for these functions as well. So for example, here's my intact account. If I go to my expense reports, all right, there at the top, expense report 1003. There is for Brian, fully approved. There's all the line items for the expense report. All the dimensions have been hit. As well, we also send over a PDF copy of the expense report with all the expense data and the embedded receipts as well. The credit card charges, as I mentioned, I've mapped these ones to the cash management module. So here's our transactions. So for example, there's a car rental. So about that transaction, again, we've mapped a number of uh, pieces of data here into the fields. The appropriate dimensions have been hit in the background as well. And for the credit card transactions, the specific receipts arrived here as well. So as I mentioned, this is all happening seamlessly in the background. Um, just a note here, I'm logged in as Jason. Jason's an administrator, so I have access to a lot more pieces of the system than the common user. The system's highly configurable in terms of what access you're giving to employees. If the employee's out able to do expenses, 
Well, great. Then you can just limit them to the expense module. If they can do timesheets and expenses, then you grant them that access specifically based on their role. Number of settings available to you uh, that we can set up on the implementation side of things. Things like setting up different regions to reflect your different corporate entities or different offices you have around the world. And then we can use that to filter out different policies that apply to each of these offices, different projects they could access. Of course, there's our notification system, notifying employees when things are approved or rejected, uh, when you're sitting on an expense report and you haven't reviewed it after a day. More importantly, here's also where we set up all the expense categories. Once they're here in Exonia, you can set up all the specific rules and policies with every single expense category. Do uh, you allow TIP to be claimed, yes or no, which you can always limit. Are, receipt, are memos required or optional? Same with attendees. Towards the bottom here is where you can set up your expense policies and rules. Policies are set up, uh, conditions are set up in two ways, as either violations there on the left or prevent submit rules on the right. Violations are going to be flags that are triggered for the expenses if they've broken this rule. It still allows it to move into the approval process. It doesn't impede that, but it'll flag it with an exception flag so the approver is going to take a closer look. So, for example, if you insist receipts be on everything, but sometimes there are cases where they lose receipts, well, I can have it trigger the receipt indicator. Uh, if they're missing receipt for any expense, it'll let it go into approvals, but it's going to flag it. You can also set it so that as part of that flag, if they're missing that receipt data, you route it to somebody else as part of that approval process. And if you only care about it over, say, $10, well, you put a dollar threshold in there. Rules can be set up as spending limits, say nothing over $50, and flag it if it is. Tip limitations. You can even set up rules about how old the expenses can be when you submit them. Say nothing over 30 days, it gets flagged. Anything over 60 days, outright blocked. Prevent submit rules will block the item from moving into submissions if they break this condition. In that case, they'd have to go to you as the administrator if there was a legitimate reason and have you push it through on their behalf. You can also set up conditions about flagging the expenses, uh, the foreign currencies if they're edited, allowing them to, limit, to edit the distance, for example, on mileage to account for detours. And we've also introduced new abilities to trigger uh, to set annual limits on these expense categories. Uh, we designed that for a specific client that uh, gives a fitness benefit every year that they can use up. That's a great example of how um, with Nixonia, if there's a feature that we're not currently supporting, some way that makes your life easier, let us know. We actually do all our feature requests for free for any Nixonia subscriber. There's no development cost on that. And if it makes sense to us and we're able to do it, we'll introduce it to the application universally for any other customer that may benefit from that functiona functionality. Great. Um, just to close things off, with Nixonia, uh, if you're a Nixonia subscriber uh, and you choose to go live with us, uh, it's a collaborative process. The implementation with Nixonia, you'll be on a first name basis with your implementation analyst. They'll book an hour call with you, have your account live on the screen, and they'll ask you to log into your Intact account where we'll do the first synchronization from Nixonia. That can happen successfully in as little as 15 minutes. At that point, we'll get your reflection, your feedback on what it is you need on the expenses. Set up the configuration, and there's over 100 different settings we can turn on or off to direct how the expenses are mapped and presented here in Exonia and exported out to Intact. Then, of course, we'll probably book a couple other calls after you afterwards, give you a chance to review the account, make adjustments if we need to. Once you're fully configured, we move on to training. Training is included with Nixonia. Uh, we train your administrators on administrating the account, the oversight they have, how to uh, review the expenses, what controls they have in place, how to set up all those rules and policies. We record all our training sessions as well. We do them via GoToMeeting, as we do here, and we record them so we can present them as a training video for you. So you can use those later on uh, for anybody that can't attend live training or for anybody uh, who needs a refresher on what they need to do. This also applies to the user training, which is unlimited. Your users are trained on your account how to do their expenses, reflecting your specific rules and policies. We again record those sessions so we have a video available for anybody that needs a refresher or to review or if somebody simply can't attend the live session. And when I say unlimited, that means we can of course support multiple sessions if you need to account for availability or time zones in different regions of the world. Uh, we can accommodate any and all of that. And then finally, once you start using Nixonia, 
all your users have access to our help and support system. They're more than welcome to call us, email us. They don't have to go through your system administrators for assistance. They can actually just contact us directly. There's no charge for it, and we'll, help, we'll open up a support ticket and help them resolve any issues they're having. That applies to all your users. It also applies to you as administrators. If down the road you have a business need change, if you're growing, if you need some more functionality introduced to the system, let us know. We'll help set that up for you. Terrific. So that kind of concludes my side of the presentation. Oh, uh, the one other thing I'll mention, I did skip this, uh, with credit cards. Uh, with business and corporate credit cards, we'll work with your administrators to set up the integration with that through your banking institution, through your credit card provider. Employees can add their own personal cards to Nexonia, uh, direct the transaction feed there as well. That tends to be more for employees with a card dedicated to business. The one difference is they are allowed to delete out personal transactions completely from the system because, of course, you've probably got personal transactions in there. Um, but uh, otherwise, that concludes uh, my side. Terrific. Thank you, uh, Jason. Yeah, I'm good. Sorry. Thank you, Jason. And uh, again, I, if there's any questions, uh, again, please uh, type them in the uh, on the right hand side. Jason or, or Cindy will answer your questions. If there's any questions after today, please send it and talk to your account manager. Once again, I'd like to thank. Uh, both Cindy and uh, Jason for the, their presentations today, and I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on the uh, the webinar today. If you would like more information on the cloud uh, accounting, please contact us at BAS. Please uh, contact your account manager and uh, contact uh, or email marketing at bass.com. Thank you, and. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.